That is what makes Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam dependent. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is dependent, and Allah jalla wa is independent. Who created Allah? If Allah jalla wa is the creator of everyone, and you Muslims believe that whatever exists needs a creator. Therefore, Allah exists. Yes, Allah exists. So who created Allah jalla wa Remember, this is incorrect. Why? Because we don't say that everything that exists needs a creator. Everything that came into existence from non-existence needs a creator. Remember this. If you understand this, try memorizing this deductive argument. A very simple syllogism. Everything that has beginning in its existence needs a cause. That's the, the major premise. The minor premise is that the universe has a beginning in its existence. Therefore, the result of that is that the universe has a cause. I don't have the time to go through the details of this in light of the second law of thermodynamics and expansion of the universe and the Big Bang cosmology. Today, most of the atheists believe that the universe has a beginning. And if they believe that it doesn't have a beginning, then we will ask them to prove it. And they can't prove that. So the majority of the, the modern day or the new atheism movement, they believe that the universe has a beginning. It, it came into existence from non-existence. We as Muslims, we believe that whatever came into existence needs a creator. But Allah did not come into existence from non-existence. Allah has always existed. Therefore, Allah Jalla does not need a creator. Allah doesn't have a creator. So we do not say, لِكُلِّ مَوْجُودٍ khalik. We say, لِكُلِّ مَخْلُوكٍ khalik. Everything that came into existence needs a creator. Allah Jalla did not come into existence. Allah is uncreated. So if someone says, if everything needs a creator, then who created God? We say God is uncreated. If God is uncreated, then you're saying, who created the uncreated? Who designed the undesigned? Who initiated the one who was never initiated? That question doesn't make sense. Does that make sense to anyone? So if anyone tries confusing you in the future by saying, if everything that, if everything that exists needs a creator, then who created God? We say, no, everything that came into existence from non-existence needs a creator. Allah Jalla has always existed. Allah's existence is eternal. وَيَجِبُ فِي حَقِّهِ تَعَالَى الْقِدَمْ Allah is Qadim, He's pre-eternal. Now if someone asks this question, who created Allah Jalla wa'ala? This question that who created God, this will lead to infinite regress. What does this mean? It's called tasalsul in Arabic. If a person says, Allah was created, and everything that exists is a creator, then that creator who created Allah, who created that God? Then whoever created that God, who created that God? The result of that would be that this universe would never exist. The fact that the universe exists itself is a proof that there has to be someone who is independent. Otherwise, it would lead to infinite regress. For instance, a simple example that even children will be able to memorize. If you see a beautiful island, some beautiful scenic, picturesque island, on that island you see a beautiful mansion. A man called Zayd, he says, I constructed this mansion. Now you have witnessed that mansion, you have seen that building. And your belief in that building is based on your empirical judgment. You've seen it, witnessed it with your own eyes. You believe in the existence of that mansion. Now some man called Zayd, he said, I constructed it. But in order for him to build that building, he needs the permission of some man called Bakr. And in order for Bakr to build, to give permission to Zayd, he is dependent upon the permission of Umar. Umar is dependent upon the permission of Khalid. Khalid is dependent upon the permission of Abdullah. Abdullah is dependent upon the permission of Abdurrahman. And this continues infinitely. Forever. It doesn't have an end point. Would that mansion exist? If the chain continues, if it does not have an end point with someone who is independent, would that mansion ever come into existence? You have to have someone above, some higher being who is independent, who does not need the permission of someone above him in order for that mansion to exist. How? The one who is the last person in the chain, has to be independent. He gave permission to the one below him. He gave permission to the one below him. He gave permission to the one below him. And then that permission was granted to Bakr. Then Bakr granted that permission to Zayd. And then Zayd constructed that mansion. Does that make sense? If this chain continues infinitely, then the mansion would, wouldn't have existed. The fact that the mansion exists itself is a proof that the chain has to end somewhere. Do you believe in the existence of the mansion? Yes, I saw it with my own eyes. So now you have to believe that there has to be someone who is independent, does not need the permission of someone above him. Does that make sense to you?
All of you, do you understand this? In the same way. Does this universe exist? The fact that the universe exists itself is a proof that there is someone there who is independent. Someone there who doesn't need the permission of anyone above him. Someone who is independent, all-knowing, all-powerful, extremely intelligent. Otherwise, the universe wouldn't have existed. So the fact that the universe exists is a proof that that someone who has created the universe is independent. If that creator was dependent upon someone above him, then the universe wouldn't have existed. And if all of them need the permission of someone above them, then that leads to infinite regress, which is a logical fallacy. Logically, akal and it's fallacious. It doesn't make sense. No man of akal would, act, would ever accept that. So if anyone raises that question to you in the future, if someone says this, that if Allah created everything, then who created God? Who created Allah? Remember, Allah is not someone that we can comprehend. Allah is beyond our comprehension. We cannot understand the reality of Allah. But as far as these arguments are concerned, we can refute any atheist. If they can try confusing you, you say to them, who converted Richard Dawkins to theism? Say that to the, to the atheist. Who converted Richard Dawkins to theism? Who made him a theist? Or who converted Sam Harris to theism? Or who converted Christopher Hitchens to theism? He says, oh, let me think about it. I don't know. Let me find out. Is that really true? Is that true? So you will confuse him, won't you? He will go back to his people and he will ask them. They will say, oh, Richard Dawkins. He's, he hasn't converted. He believes that Allah doesn't exist. He hasn't embraced Islam. He hasn't embraced Christianity or Judaism. He doesn't believe in the existence of a creator. You are a liar or Muslim who's saying that who converted Richard Dawkins. You're probably talking about some other Richard guy. But my Richard Dawkins, my master, he cannot accept Islam. He doesn't believe in the existence of Allah. So we will say, the way you, my question is wrong to, to the atheist, yes? Who converted Richard Dawkins? In the same way, for you to ask me the question, who created Allah? The way you say Richard Dawkins, my master Richard Dawkins is, is unconverted. Our answer to that atheist will be, my Allah is uncreated. The way you say that, you, I'm probably talking about some other Richard guy in the same way, I will say to him, you are probably talking about some, some other God that they believe that God can come into existence from non-existence. My God, the Allah that I believe in is eternal, is uncreated. The question itself is logically fallacious. It does not make sense for people to say that who created God. Anytime people ask you this question, you'll say that leads to infinite regress. Allah Jalla is independent. Allah Jalla is not contingent. Allah Jalla has always existed. And our akal, our intellect cannot comprehend the reality of Allah Jalla Human mind, we have to accept our limitations. And Rasulullah is the one who saw Allah Jalla We believe in the existence of Allah through Rasulullah Through rational proofs, we believe in the existence of Allah Jalla But the complete Tawheed, the reality of Tawheed can only be understood by believing in Rasulullah So through the mediation of Rasulullah We believe in Allah Jalla Sifat, Allah Jalla attributes. A true Sufi will never become Murtad. Why? Because he has that experiential knowledge of Allah Jalla in dunya. In dunya, he experiences the gnosis of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And when he ex experiences the qurb of Allah Jalla wa'ala, he gets the glimpse of what he will see in the hereafter. This is all based on analytical knowledge, discursive knowledge. The Sufi's knowledge about Allah Jalla wa'ala is experiential knowledge. He experiences the gnosis of Allah Jalla wa'ala. Through his breath, he breathes with the name of Allah. We believe in the oneness of Allah Jalla wa'ala and the finality of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's prophethood. May Allah Jalla wa'ala bless us with his divine guidance so that we can act upon the ahkam of deen, act upon the ahkam of sharia, understand the creedal matters, aqaid of ahlu sunnah wal jama'ah, and learn the practical teachings of our ulama, how to defend al-Islam, and how to defend the honor of Allah, and how to defend the honor of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Subscribe to our new YouTube channel for all the latest videos of Sheikh Saqib Iqbal. Link in the description. Thank you very much for watching our full video. If you want to see Islamic videos like this, please subscribe to our channel fan of Saqib.